Hello freediving family! Today we are going to talk about fins for freediving. The different types of fins for freediving, the different materials that we use to make the fins as well. Alright, let's get straight into it. There are a few things that set freediving fins apart from other fins, like uh, fins for scuba diving or fins for bodyboarding or anything else that you can imagine. Fins for underwater hockey, for example, right? There are a few things that really set them apart. Now, for starters, all freediving fins will basically have an enclosed heel foot pocket, right? We usually have these rubber foot pockets that enclose the heel. And that basically ensures that we get a very strong power transfer going down from our kick to the tip of our fin. Keeping in mind that when it comes to freediving, efficiency is key. We're looking to get the maximum power out of minimum effort because we are holding our breath all the time. Now, the first fin I want to talk about are these little short fins. You may have seen in the most other freediving videos, for example, freedivers wear long freediving fins, but you can actually use short fins as well. There's nothing to say that you can't use different kinds of fins for freediving. It's just that those long fins are better for it. <laughs> They're more effective for it. If you're just starting out, these little short fins will be perfect for you. I mean, they're typically snorkeling fins, not free diving fins. But the difference between free diving and snorkeling is mostly that free divers dive a little bit deeper than snorkelers will. Now this fin has a plastic blade, right? Now there are three different main materials that we use in free diving for our fins. We have plastic, we have fiberglass, and we have carbon fiber. Plastic fins are the cheapest and the blades are usually the least efficient. Here we have an example of some plastic long fins, right? Now these are typical fins that you'll see freedivers using, especially recreational freedivers. The length of this blade is designed to give you the maximum output for the minimum input, by which I mean to give you the most propulsion for each fin stroke that you do. If they were a little bit longer, then the balance of power wouldn't work as well. If they were shorter, you wouldn't get as much power as you could. Pretty much the length of this blade, or the length of the fin, is designed for maximum efficiency for freediving. You see that this fin also has an enclosed foot pocket, so the, the transfer of power comes very easily and efficiently through from your leg to your foot and then into the blade of the fin itself. Now fins are typically broken up into two separate components. We have the foot pocket and we have the blade. Now the reason why I mention that is because often we buy these things separately. This fin, for example, the foot pocket is connected to the blade. There's, you can't take it off. But there are other fins in which the blade is detachable. For example, with these fins, when you're first beginning in freediving, you can buy a nice cheap set of plastic plastic fins, right, or with plastic blades. And then as you develop as a freediver, if you want to upgrade your gear in the future, you can take these blades out and replace them with a higher quality or a higher performance blade. For example, you'll see that these are just blades on their own. What we could do is we could have started by buying some fins with some cheap detachable plastic blades. And then as, we, as time goes on, we want to upgrade, we simply take those blades out and we put these blades in then we still have the same comfortable foot pocket that we have gotten used to using, but with a high performing blade. So this is a fiberglass blade. And a fiberglass blade is a much more higher performing blade than plastic because of how responsive the material, by which I mean, when I bend the fin, or when I bend the blade, it snaps back onto itself. For example, when I bend the plastic, you notice that the response is not as strong. Right? So this is actually happening when we're in the water. When we're finning and we're moving through the water, as I kick and bend the blade, it is bending back on itself. I mean, all the materials that we use, they're effectively working for you, right? Like, you kick into it and then the material snaps back on itself. Plastic just snaps a lot slower and with less force. And, car and, and fiberglass will snap with a lot more force, carbon fiber with even more force or with even more responsiveness. So you get a lot more power out of the same kick, right? If I kick with the same force into a plastic fin, I'll get a lot less power than if I would have kicked with the same force into a fiberglass fin. And the same thing with the fiberglass fin, I'll get less power than if I kicked in with a carbon fiber fin. The other thing as well is that with a plastic blade, you don't get as progressive a response as you get with a fiberglass or a carbon fiber blade. For example, with a plastic blade, 
you kick into it and it just flops back into itself. But if you're in the water and you're fitting with a fiberglass or a carbon fiber blade, then the transfer of power is more progressive, by which I mean it rolls up the fin, which is a much more effective way to be fitting through the water. It requires a lot less effort and power from you, and you get a lot more power and, uh, and output from the blade itself. Now, these are carbon fiber fins, and you'll see just how flexible this is and just how responsive they are. These are actually my personal fins. These are mine, I swim with these all the time. Something I don't really wanna to go to too much in this video is brands. I get asked all the time, like, what's the best brand? What's the best mask for freediving? What's the best fin for freediving? And the real answer is that there is no such thing necessarily as the best fin or the best gear, but really just what's the best gear for you. Personally, I found after a lot of trial and error over the years that Molchanov carbon fiber fins are the best for me. I personally do believe that these are the best buy fins in the world. I believe it so much that I reached out to them for sponsorship and now I use their fins. One of the things that I personally love about these fins, which I, to my knowledge no one else in the world is doing, is these are handmade custom foot pockets. These were made to measure for my feet. So they are the most comfortable things I have ever worn and I'm able to stay hours and hours in the water without getting cramps or anything along those lines. And especially for those who don't like wearing fin socks in the warm climates, you're not going to need to because these are custom made for your feet. You don't need to wear socks, you won't get blisters from them and they are just beautiful. While we are on the topic of foot pockets though, most of the time when we are buying fins, we tend to buy a size up, or even sometimes if we're in cold areas, two sizes up, so we can wear a varying thickness of a fin sock. So this is a fin sock. It's a neoprene sock that you wear under your fins, and it keeps your feet warm, but it also stops any kind of chafe or blistering occurring from the plastic rubbing against you. The rubber that they use to make foot pockets is usually quite hard. If you're wearing these all day in finning, it's quite abrasive and it chafes your skin. So we've covered what we're looking for in a foot pocket, and we've covered the different materials that we use for blades. We have our plastic blades, which are the cheapest, but the least efficient. We have our fiberglass, which are a little bit more expensive and a little bit more efficient. And then we have our carbon fiber, which are more expensive, but much more efficient. And effectively, they are the best fins to use for freediving. Carbon fiber basically give us the strongest output for the least amount of effort. So the other thing we need to talk about is different stiffnesses of the blades. We tend to have three stiffnesses, soft, medium, and hard. Every different fin company is gonna have a slightly different stiffness. For example, what is a soft in one company might be a little bit harder or a little bit softer in another company, right? So these are not universal, these stiffnesses. You tend to have to know the brand a little bit, but they're a good general guideline. So what's best for you? What stiffness do you need for your diving and for your body type? One of the main things that decides how stiff a blade that you're gonna need is your size and your weight. The bigger you are and the heavier you are, then the stiffer the blade that you're going to need to push your body mass through the water. Small people tend to go for soft blades, medium people medium stiffness, and your bigger boys and girls will need your hard blades. Alright, so here's an example of the stiffnesses between these three plastic fins. This is a soft stiffness. With very little force, I can bend it the whole way around, but like with all plastic fins, it doesn't come back on itself very well. It's not a very responsive material. This is a medium stiffness fin, a little bit firmer, definitely a lot more responsive than the soft, but still plastic, not as good as it could be. And this is an example of a hard plastic fin. It will take a lot to push this through the water. You tend to need very big and strong legs. <laughs> so your size and your weight is definitely a factor. The other thing that we have to take into consideration is what kind of diving are you doing? For example, if you're diving in current, or if you're diving in rough conditions, then you may want stiffer blades, because a stiffer blade, while it is going to take more energy from you to power it, it will have a higher output. You will get more power out of each fin. For example, for anyone that's spearfishing out there, you may want a slightly stiffer fin, because you are gonna be fighting current more often, you may be fighting fish more often. So a slightly stiffer blade is gonna be more effective for you. For people who are just doing pure free diving, and especially if they're not diving in rough conditions, softer blades are usually going to be more effective, or they're going to be more designed for the kind of diving that you're doing. I know that there's this real generic thing in free diving, everyone's just like, yeah, get soft, soft, soft blades, but it's really not as simple as that. You really have to find blades and find fins that suit you, your size, the style of diving that you're going to be doing as well. 
Another factor that may decide what stiffness of a fin that you're going to buy will be how deep you're actually diving. Often the deeper that you're diving, the stiffer the blade you're going to want because the deeper you go, the more negative buoyancy that you're going to encounter. So the harder it will be to swim up. So you may want a stiffer blade to come up from those deeper dives. So you can see the kind of picture that I'm trying to create. You need to decide for yourself what fin and what stiffness is going to suit you for your size and for the kind of diving that you're doing. It's not a one size fits all situation. And many people will have different kinds of fins for different kinds of activities. For example, a lot of people wouldn't feel comfortable taking their carbon fiber fins diving in an area where they could potentially get banged up on rocks or, or, or things like that. Personally, I've never had an issue diving in rough conditions or diving near or jumping off rocks wearing carbon fiber blades. People often talk about carbon fiber fins being the most fragile, but personally I've never really had an issue with them. Even though I would never argue that your carbon fiber fins aren't as robust and tough as your plastic fins, but still I've never personally had an issue with it. Really quickly, something I want to touch on that comes down mostly to a matter of opinion is rails on blades. Some people feel that having rails on your blades is more effective, by which I mean it channels the water in a more direct line out the back of your fin so you get the maximum propulsion forward. I don't want to weigh into that discussion because I, I don't have evidence for or against it. Alright, and lastly we're going to talk about... Monofins. <laughs> Monofins are used primarily by competition freedivers. Monofins are designed to give you maximum output for minimum effort, but they're pretty one dimensional, by which I mean you don't get a lot of mobility moving around the water with them. It's very effective to go in one direction, but I personally wouldn't use a monofin to go fun diving, for example. Uh, where I'm going to be up, going up and down, around, maybe swimming through caves, going cruising around a wreck, swimming with fish. These are not what you want for that. These are good for big dives, deep dives, big performances. In terms of recreational freediving, they're not very effective, they're not very useful, and you're probably not going to want to use them. Unless you have a mermaid fetish. Now this is a Molchanov fiberglass monofin. This is the exact model of monofin that I use for all of my competition dives and I have for years. The Molchanov monofin is pretty much the staple, the standard monofin now in the competitive freediving industry. People are also using other fins, for example the most notable one will be the Waterways Glide monofin. Personally they're not my favourite, but I'm not going to get stuck into why I've chosen this monofin and not the others. I just wanted to give you a better example about monofins in general. So the foot pockets for these monofins, which are all custom made and made to measure for everyone's different foot size, they have an open heel, which is very different than all the bifins I just showed you. The reason why we have an open heel is so that you can fin with pointed toes like a ballerina and it's still comfortable like that. Keeping in mind, a monofin is designed for one thing and that is performance. Maximum output, minimum input. There really is so much I could say about monofins. And so I think it's probably going to be best to make a monofin video where I can go into the details in the different fins. I can talk about the different materials used for the foot pockets and how that affects performance. I can talk about the different stiffnesses of the blade, the different blade materials, the different ways that each different uh, company tapers their blades for, for different divers styles and to get the best performance out of each different diver. So guys, before you go out there and buy a new set of fins or upgrade your fins, have a think about what material you want your blades to be, how stiff you want them to be, and just in general, what kind of diving you're going to be doing, what you're going to use them for. The best thing that you can do is to walk into a dive shop that stocks different fins and try a bunch of them on. See what works best for you, see what feels good for you. Talk to the dive shop staff, get their opinion, their advice, because every different country will be selling different brands of fins. And I am not in a position to say, oh yeah, everyone go buy this fin, everyone go and buy that fin. Because there's a chance that they won't stock that brand in your country or in your town, and I don't know what you need those fins for or what's best for you. Thanks for watching, freediving family. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it answered some of your questions. If you are new here, make sure you subscribe. I make content aimed at improving your freediving. If you want to help me create a stronger global freediving community, then share the video around. Make sure that your dive buddies see it. As always, I'll be answering all questions in the comments. I'll see you in the water somewhere. I'm Adam Stern, I hold my breath and dive really deep.